uh, look at McDonald's stock. It is, uh, uh, that's the treasury. Show me the McDonald's stock, please. Uh, the stock is down 4.5%. There's an outbreak of E. coli that has been linked to McDonald's quarter pounders. Dr. Frank Contessa joins us now. First of all, doctor, what are the symptoms of E. coli? Well, great to be back with you, Stuart. So this type of infection, E. coli, um, which is a form of food, a food infection, it's gastrointestinal, uh, stomach cramps, nausea, vomiting, fever, and diarrhea. And it can be dangerous in people who are elderly, sick, young, the immunocompromised. The vast majority of people are going to be okay, even if you get this infection. You'll be sick for four or five days. Um, you'll get better. But it's the very old, the very young, the very sick. There's been one death link to this outbreak uh, of an older person, probably immunocompromised, and a couple dozen people hospitalized. Um, one, ch one child had something called HUS, which is hemolytic uremic syndrome. It's a rare but potentially very serious effect from E. coli. What's, a, what's the treatment? Honestly, it's fluids um, and just supportive care, and it usually self-resolves uh, within four to five days or so. So you kind of just have to keep them going and keep them hydrated. And it usually just gets better on its own. You don't load them with antibiotics. It kind of just passes. Can you tell us how it gets into the food chain? So in this case, it looks like it came from, they seem to have narrowed it down to uh, the onions, the chopped onions that were only on the quarter pounder. It didn't affect the Big Macs or any of the other uh, sandwiches that they serve. It seemed to be from the onions. And it comes from the, the, the facility that processes these things. So you come from a farm, the onions get picked. And it's usually contaminated at the processing center, and then that gets distributed out. Uh, in general, this is probably another reason to, to keep your fast food intake to a, to a minimum. It should be a rare treat and not something that you eat all the time. All right, let's move on. Uh, Pfizer has received FDA approval for its RSV vaccine. This is the first of its kind vaccine for people under 50. Under what circumstances would you recommend this for your patients? This is a good question. You're hearing more about RSV now. It's been around forever. This is not a new illness. It's been around forever. Most people have probably had it at least three or four times. Um, it causes uh, maybe 20% of most common colds. So a lot of the common colds that you've had may have been RSV. So there's all these new vaccines now. And the new change that just came this week from the FDA is that this particular Pfizer vaccine, which was only approved for older people before, is now approved for younger people but in a high risk category. So this is not recommended for the average healthy younger person, but from 18 to 65, if you have serious uh, health immunocompromised, it would be considered. Um, these are new, so I'm sort of withholding judgment until there's some independent data. The only data that's available comes from the pharmaceutical company, which you know can be suspect, uh, of course. So for the average young person, you don't need this vaccine. Got it. That's conclusive. Dr. Frank Contessa, thanks for joining us, doctor. See you again soon. Thank you, Stuart.